Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for your provision of peace, health, in the name of Jesus Christ. He said in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know something about works? You never get enough of it. Have you prayed more? Have you fasted more? <laughs> Have you studied more? That's something about works. You never get to a level where it's you have enough of it. The moment you get to a level where you are satisfied with works, that's boasting. You become arrogant. So the two, by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You get to a level, you always say, ah, you are satisfied, you are arrogant. But grace says, little effort, much result. That's grace. By grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ, just unto good works, which God had before, or then that we should walk in them. You don't walk into your work. Mekuna <laughs> ati salabos. What redemption has provided for us is not something you walk for. You walk into it. It's a walk. Yes, you walk. Somebody tonight is walking into the fullness of his redemption package. Amen. It's a walk, not walk. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained. It's not something you are trying to cook up. It's already there. Any person wishing you evil, he is too late. He's already there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are unstoppable. You're just walking. My God, whom you have come to worship, is smarter than any person. He's going to beat everyone that is contending with you. Amen. Let me tell you this. Your competition is not with people. Your competition is with ignorance. We are not competing with any person. Our competition is, with, if there's any competition, is with ignorance. If you are competing with any person, sir, you lack light. Light does not compete, it dominates. <laughs> Remain standing, please. John. 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, he has said that before, but again, that vital. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Without light, you are lifeless. The light of life. Sir. There will be no dead area in your life after this. Amen. Any portion of your life where things are not working, it will begin to work. Amen. It takes the when light comes, it imparts life. 
You see this person standing here? There is no area of the that is lifeless. You are coming here to walk in light to become a living force. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Without light, you are lifeless. And when you are lifeless, you can't walk in the redemption package that God has offered for you. You need to be awake to partake of it. Let me finally say this before you sit down. The only way Satan defeats people is to keep them in darkness. That's all. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness. Can you see that? So, when darkness comes knocking at your door, you must allow light to open the door. And when the door is open, no one will be there. Neku Baka Kali Atesa. When darkness comes knocking at your door, you must allow light to open it. And when the door is open, no one will be there. When darkness comes knocking at, knocking at your door, you must allow light to open it. And when the door is open, no one will be there. Only light can expose the naughtiness of darkness. Sit down. And you know, the one who said I am the door is the light. <laughs> The one who says, I am the door, is the light. So that means I allow Jesus to open the door to whoever is knocking. <laughs> Sir, when you leave here tonight, all doors shall be open for you. And you look, you won't know, you won't see the person knocking. Whatever issue of concern you came in here with, as this service ends, it expires tonight. Amen. He said, I am the door. He is the door. He is light. A man of light knows nothing but triumph. A man of light knows nothing but triumph. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus and make it manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. A man of light knows nothing but triumph. When you are lighted by the word of God, 
you ride on impossibilities. You ride on them. You ride, you ride on impossibilities. You ride on impossibilities. Say, so I will run through our truth and leap over the wall. Those are impossibilities. When you are lighted by the word of God, you ride on impossibilities. Don't allow circumstances to form your decisions. Focus on doing what God says, no matter what the storm is. The outcome is natural. What is it? Supernatural triumph. Don't allow circumstances to form your decisions. Focus on what? Doing what God says. No matter the storm, the natural outcome is supernatural triumph. No matter the storm, the natural outcome is supernatural triumph. No matter the storm, the natural outcome is supernatural triumph. All that the enemy is doing is to just keep you in darkness, that's all. But just say, I am the light of God. He that followed me shall not walk. It's, a, it's walk. You are either walking in the light or you are walking in darkness. So make your choice. There is nothing to compete with in this world. If there's any competition, it's with darkness. Just show your light and that. Life is all about winning. Light is all about winning. A winning life is by dining with the world. Dining, eating the world. That's a winning life. And the result of winning works two ways. When you see somebody who wins, he wants to win the more. Why? Because uh, every win carries with its result. It's the result that makes you want to win the more. Another way is it challenges others. When you win, the person who wins wants to win the war. And then his winning also challenges others to try. That's why you must win. You must be a winner. It challenges others to do the same thing. You know, many people now are aspiring to become pastors because there are pastors who are living an available life. Winning works in two ways. It makes you want to win the war by the result. And then it challenges others also to be like you. You must win. Amen. Coco Golf went away with $3 million last week. Her first Grand Slam. Now she's preparing for a certain open next year. She wants to win again. The result of winning is you are determined to win. Novak Djokovic is now 24 Grand Slam. 24. When you win, you want to win the more. And he challenges others also to do the same. Please understand that. It's a treat. What makes winning exciting is the result it carries. If there is no $3 million, nobody will try to win. So, result is. Important to forget it. You are winning and no result. Forget it. That's not winning. What challenges people to become pastors is because there are pastors who are commanding results. I want to be like, I go to Mauritius and a white lady came out and said, I want to. Good things are result is the result that makes it challenging to others. Your life in this place shall be a challenge to others. Amen. Oh, no. Now let me, before time will permit us, we will stop. To let you know the, the end product of this household. You just come here, you, you don't have identity. No, you are here to have an 
a spiritual emblem on your chest for decoration that will challenge others. <laughs> That's why you are here. Very shortly, people will look at you and they'll be challenged. Amen. You, you become a subject matter in their bedroom. See? They'll be discussing possible. Can you see how this person is? That's how, that's what impact is all about. Yes, that you become a subject matter. When people close their doors, it's you that they're discussing. Positively. When Coco Golf was eight years old, that's 11 years ago because she's 19 now. At that same Otto Ash Stadium, she sat watching two females. She was eight years old, sitting watching two females, Lindsay Davenport with Martina Hingis, playing 11 years ago. She never thought that. 11 years coming, she will be the person carrying the same trophy. If somebody sits watching players becoming like them, how much more you sitting to hear God's word? Uh, that was what God said to me, sir. She was hurt and sat, not knowing what destiny holds for her 11 years' time. Sir, so you don't know what destiny holds for you each time you come and sit down and hear God's word. He yes. said to me to tell you. Natural events, I said it last Sunday, natural events are pointers of spiritual realities. That's why I'm knee deep current about sport games. It's biblical. It's a bodily exercise profitability. Even scriptures acknowledge the profitability of sports. She sat down, eight year old, watching two females playing U.S. Open eleven years ago, not knowing what destiny holds for her. So you, some of you sit here, you don't know what destiny holds for you when you come and sit down, to not watch people hear God's word. So your destiny is no dead, no dead. It's all about sitting and watching or sitting and hearing. I have been sitting for more than 28 years under at the feet of my father. Now I have emerged also. There is something about sitting and hearing, sir. She likes watching stars. She said, when I watch Nova Djokovic play against Uja Federer and Nadal, it is peak tennis. And now she's going towards peak tennis. So you see, you become what you watch. These eyes, they are seeing you, sir. I watch scriptures. There's nothing accidental about life. What is the emblem that everyone carries when he comes to Woga? Because at Woga, you are word made. And when you are word made, you are really made. So what's the end product? Joel chapter 2, beginning from verse 1. That's what becomes of any attendee here. This part 
if God were to open your eyes and see the invisible things here, you will be jumping and be laughing at your mockers. <laughs> Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord coming, for it is nigh at hand. A door of darkness and gloom, a door of cloud and of thick darkness. That the morning spread upon the mountain. A great and a strong. That's the product. You come here weak, you can't remain weak. You come here small, you can't remain small. That's the emblem you wear in this household called Woga. God has made me to pay the price of long waiting to receive what I'm imparting to you. At 60, I am careful for nothing. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Please understand this. I deceive you. Not, I, so you see, no, no, no. <laughs> it's what I have proved all these years that works. I'm sharing. If you care about your body, I can't do what I was doing at 30, 40, 50, at 60. I'll be deceiving myself. said to me. He's, I'll be unfolding it face to face. I received three hours ago. Show me that actually is the Lord that preached this thing. That I also I am a member. Partaking of the freshness of this menu that comes every Thursday and Sunday. So sit down this night and let's explore the content of the world. Engaging that power of the world for supernatural triumph. I told you on Sunday that supernatural triumph is not immunity from challenges. It is victory through challenges. 
you are, you are something to your avoid Italy. That's fine. You go to it, sir. Supernatural travel is riding on impossibilities. Say, if that's the picture, a fire devoured before them, and behind them, a flame bonnet. Eh? Yet they are unperturbed. The land is before them as the Garden of Eden, behind them, a desolate wilderness. The appearance of them is as the appearance of us. Now, let's pause here. Can I hear you say to your neighbor, appearance matters. Appearance matters. Say to your neighbor, what you wear matters. What you wear matters. A fearful person dressed as a bold person will change from Timidity and demonstrate the qualities of boldness. Just dressing. Nothing past confidence like dresses. So don't just dress your body, dress your mind. When I was stepping into ministry, God said to me, dress your mind and your mind will dress your world. Dress your mind and your mind will dress your life. Every waking morning, put the garment of the world. What do I say? And then put the garment of free before you step out. You will come out victorious. Every day. Dress your mind, God's word. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. So dress your mind with God's word. A winning life is by dining with God's word. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 6 verse 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment. Forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart. And tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. That's dressing your mind. And it will dress your world. I said to you last Sunday that uh, if you begin to treat God's word as a shell, you live inside and you carry on your back and bear perpetually like a snake, you'll be free. That's the meaning of bind them continually upon thy heart. That's carrying it on you. Your back perpetually, continually, sir. Continually. And then their appearances as the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of child on top of the mountain, shall they leap. leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stumble. As a strong people set in battle array. Jewel chapter 2, verse 5. Before their first, more faces shall be paid. They shall run like mighty men. They shall run upon the wall. They shall march everyone on his way. They shall not break their hands. Neither shall one tell of force upon another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. That's what becomes of you, sir. When the word of God, when you are dressed, what keys or that you stay alive? They shall fall upon the sword and they shall not be wounded. Anything that comes against you, you still survive. You stand, you triumph. You are riding on impossibilities. 
what what right offers you the privilege of riding on impossibilities and then you become a wow in the mouth of everybody. It's a wow ride. Supernatural trial is a wow ride. There are people commanding supernatural triumph that when you just look a little about them, you say, wow. <laughs> it's a wow ride. Catching the attention of others. That's what supernatural triumph is. Sir. I triumph over the spirit of blindness. I want to point three ingredients inside God's word that you should always go after. Number one, oil, oil, oil. He <laughs> said, let not your head lack oil. Aya. Oil. What is in the world that makes for supernatural triumph? Oh yeah. Now let's look at oil producing nations. The process of how oil is formed in the ground is not an overnight thing. <laughs> I'm taking you to now on a on a word. The process of how oil is formed in a nation like Nigeria is not an overnight thing. So anything good, there's no quick fix. For you to extract oil, you must first of all know where to drill it. It begins there. It's not everywhere you find oil. The extraction of oil demands that you know where to drill for oil. Because it's not everywhere. And the process is not overnight. That is the right place to go. What case oil is rock? But there are three kinds of rock. Igneous rock, metamorphic rock, and sedimentary rock. You don't go to igneous rock to look for a field of oil. Neither do you go to metamorphic rock. You go to a sedimentary rock. So the right rock it's a requirement. Sediment simply means it has sediments of fish, shell of fish, plant, animal remains that are broken down with heat over a long period of time. No, yes, yes. And then they produce oil. That makes a nation wealthy. But it's not just enough to discover the field of oil. You must know how to extract it. That's why we have oil here, but we don't know how to extract it. But those who know how to extract it, but they don't have, they come and they drill, they lift it, they take it away, refine it, and bring it back to, to buy. You have it. So it's not enough to locate where oil is. You must know how to extract it from the ground. Or as somebody who knows how to extract it from the ground, who doesn't how to come to your house, extract it, give you a little bit, and you'll be thanking him. Thank you. No, why are you the real one who have it? He gives you good things from the product that you have. 
Harry, but you don't know how to. Stand to your feet. I will keep this. If you don't come on Sunday, it's your fault. How? The saddest thing is this. You have it. He comes to you. He employs you to extract. He takes it away. Brings the product and you buy it. And then you queue to buy. But it's all there. They don't queue. Anything you have available in you that you carry and you are keen to buy. Because you lack. People who know how to extract what God has put on their Instagram, check, they don't queue for anything. Yes. Woga is a learning center. You believe? It's not you are believing. Uh, you are too late. You are queuing in line to buy. You lack what it takes to extract it. People who know how to extract don't queue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For anything good. When I heard my father, the apostle, say, It has been many, many years he entered bank, and yet he's in command of money. To get anything good in life is proof that you lack what it takes to extract it. What I want you to do, I'm keeping you hungry. We'll take the communion tonight. It's on Sunday. Each person invite 10 people. Your queuing to get anything good has ended today. Amen. Amen. Check out during the scarcity of cash flow. You never see people who know how to eat lying. Hmm. People stay days. Yeah, they are competing with ignorance. Nothing else. Those who know it, they, they pass them. You know why you are here? So that you can be passing them. Amen. And then even show them how to. Amen. I mean anything. Anything you are queen in line to get. Even blessings. You don't queue. You don't queue to get blessings of any kind. You don't queue to get children. You don't queue to get a job. You don't queue it. When you know how to extract it. All you need is to go to the right rock, which is sedimentary rock, that carries on characteristics. It has to be porous. Sedimentary rock is porous. To what? To store the oil. So you also want to be porous. Porous will be open. Man, and then you have to be impermeable. That means you cap to trap. You are porous to receive, and then you are impermeable so that not to lose it. Man, I'll be taking you on a world ride on Sunday. That's why this man, you don't see him everywhere. Yes, sir. When you came here and Steve went to the house today, you saw me dressed. Uh, but just to receive you guys, that what I'm saying here is true. No matter who you are, when you come to my house, I have to dress well to receive you. Every of my moments is superb. No careless moment. Light. I'm not missing anything, sir. My bedroom is heaven. Because when you are with God, so you create heaven wherever you are. By the word of, by the word of Lord, what the heaven is created. So you can be where you are and create heaven. In this place, we will come in here for your life to be an attraction. Nothing else. What God is showing me, ah, I'm racing against time, not any person. How will I be able to discharge this before my time is over? That's what I'm listening after, not any person.
But my prayer for everyone standing here tonight is this. You will no longer queue for anything good. Amen. My father, the apostle of faith, is not queuing. You go to a place, they can help you anywhere. Because you know how to extract. You are here tonight. You are not born again, wherever you are. Put your hand on your chest. And say this was after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I come to you tonight. Save me. I believe in my heart that you died for me. And on the third day you rose from the dead. Come into my life and write my name in the book of life. I am born again. If you have said that prayer in my life, in your, just come up here for your blessing. I want you to tie this mystery with a heart expectation that will turn out to be a testimony on Sunday which you will share. Lord, we bless this communion for the impartation of the life of Jesus, for the transmission of his vitality into our lives tonight. Whatever the issue of concern is, turns into a testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. this communion is blessed. It opens you up for healthy living, supernatural triumph. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Turning around, everything turning around for oh my oh I can see everything yeah. I can see everything yeah. I can see everything yeah. Oh I can see everything yeah. Hear the sun in a run Hear the sun in a run Everything is turning around for my Everything is turning around for my favor. Everything is turning around for my good. Everything is turning around for my good. And I can see everything. It is turning around. It is turning around. The reason why you are giving the Holy Spirit is for you to know how to extract the good things of life. Not just blowing tongues and you go hungry. Listen to this. Hear what Pharaoh said. Can we find such a man as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. That's why you are giving. To know how to extract the oil of the feed of life. That's why you are giving the Holy Spirit. You are supposed to be an answer to your world. Hear what Pharaoh said. Pharaoh signifies the world and worldly people. Can we find such a man as this is? That should be said for everyone here, wherever you are. That's why you are giving the Holy Ghost to assess, to drain, lift up the oil in the belly of the earth cross. Whether in the game of ball or whatever game or name it. That's the reason for the Holy Ghost. Can we find such a man as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. For as much as God has shown thee all this, there is no so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over. I shall. And then concerning Daniel, there is a man in the kingdom in whom the Spirit of the Holy God, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of God was found in him, whom thy father Nebuchadnezzar made master. That's the reason for the Holy Ghost, sir. Any Jew you see, you employ in your house, he dominates. Yes. Yes, they dominate their own. You are a believer, you are more Jewish than the Jew. Yes, so when we say we are dominating by light, I know what you are talking about. Yes, I know what your end product should be. They shall go to and fro in the city. That means they are the ones in charge. 
Ah, Sha. They shall run upon the wall. You know what it is to run upon the wall? I saw a unit of Israel Defense Force running upon the wall. Living scripture, sir. Physically running upon the wall. How they have trained themselves to be run. When you are working upon the wall, you take your time. But this one, you are, you are just running. So they have mastered it. Oh, yeah. You don't know why you are here. It's to master the affairs of life. Amen. As you go to bed tonight, you wake up tomorrow, you'll be ten times bigger. Amen. Ten times better. Amen. Wherever you go tomorrow, doors shall open on their own. Amen. My God, Jesus, shall be your door and your light. Amen. At the same time, it's a new day. Your sleep shall be sound tonight. Shall we share the goodness? One person, ten people on Sunday. Let's share the goodness one more time. All the days of our lives. Dominion 2023. My light has come. My light has come. So it is. 